the Senate Republicans are still short of the magic number to pass their $1.4 trillion tax reform bill and budget bill, but the measure has moved closer to the finish line. After President Trump went to Capitol Hill yesterday to rally Republican lawmakers, the Senate Budget Committee approved the bill on a 12 to 11 party line vote. Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell is at least six votes short of the votes needed to get the tax reform measure through the full Senate. The sticking point is a Congressional Budget Office report which estimates that Americans making less than $75,000 a year will be worse off while wealthy Americans will benefit the most. Democrats decided to pull out of negotiations with Republicans after Trump tweeted that he saw no way of striking a deal with Democratic leaders Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, or as he referred to them, Chuck and Nancy. Senate Minority Leader Schumer responded to Trump's tweet. Rather than going to the White House for a show meeting that won't result in an agreement from a president who doesn't see a deal, We've asked Leader McConnell and Speaker Ryan to meet with us. But the president doubled down with his attack on Democrats. They should be calling immediately and say, we want to see you, but probably they won't because nothing to them is important other than raising taxes. Joining us now to talk about the GOP tax and spending bill's likely impact is Amy Matsui, senior counsel and director of government relations for the National Women's Law Center. And good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. So I'm, I'm really trying desperately to wrap my arms around this. Um, the bill is called to figure out where, where are the jobs coming and how is it uh, that this tax bill is allegedly going to help women, minorities, underrepresented, uh, underrepresented ethnic groups and small businesses. So I think the problem with this bill is that you have a title that doesn't live up to what the substance shows. Yeah. So like a president who doesn't live up to what the substance of the presidency should be. <laughs> so this is really kind of a sham tax bill because what women and families are going to see from the jump is their taxes increase and they're going to see both a loss of health insurance coverage, which makes everyday families have to struggle more. Um, people who have pre-existing conditions, whether it's cancer or diabetes, are going to lose the, the care that they need to make it through the day and make it through the year. Why, why will people lose their, uh, their health insurance under the, under the tax bill? As so under the written? Senate bill, they're eliminating the individual mandate. So that means that... So this is their end run around Obamacare. Exactly. Okay. So they're, the tax piece of the Affordable Care Act is getting eliminated and that means that fewer people are going to want to buy insurance, fewer healthier people are going to be in the in the, the insurance marketplace and so people who have um, chronic health conditions, lower income people are going to get hit hardest the most and it's estimated that 13 million people will lose their health insurance over a 10 year period. Premiums will go up and it'll kind of throw instability in the marketplace. What other, uh, what other um, effects are we going to see on women in particular? So women um, are workers. They are going to see um, deductions that they are used to being able to claim to help them with the cost of going to work, like their union dues, their uniforms for nurses or police officers. They can no longer deduct those kinds of things. They're also going to have huge increases in their taxes because they can't deduct their state and local taxes. And that has kind of a downstream effect on state education funding and programs and services that kids and families rely on. And I think I read that they are also proposing to eliminate the deduction for medical expenses, which is really going to have a negative impact on the elderly, uh, and also you know, with people who have children that have high medical expenses, or if you have them yourself. Absolutely. On the House side of the bill, they're also um, proposing to eliminate um, student loan interest deductions, and that has a huge hit, especially on women of color who have a disproportionate share of student loans. So there's a lot in this bill that really hits ordinary people hard, um, and the pieces of the bill that are supposed to help women and families are going to expire. So you, they're going to see a hit now, they're going to see a hit in the future, and then when the, the impact of these huge tax giveaways comes to the budget, the programs that help families like food assistance, education, um, Medicaid are going to get slashed. We know that's what's going to happen because the budget lays the groundwork and shows us where they're going to make those cuts. I'm going to, I'm going to bring our panel in so we can sh share the discussion. You know, I, I, I saw an analyst for the Heritage Foundation uh, speaking on television, and one of the things that she said about 
the um, uh, the prov you know certain provisions that are expected to expire is that she doesn't think that will really happen that Congress will actually not let that happen but I I'm wondering has anyone heard anyone say anything about preventing key provisions from expiring no 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 not at all in fact my only question is why are we even discussing this as if it's anything other than doctrinal ideology funded by these billionaires mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean this is my basic question we know what they're gonna do run up a trillion and a half uh, dollar debt then cut all the social programs. This yes. is their a budget is a, is a is a political document, and so is this one. Is there any reason to think about this as anything other than hard right ideology? This is well, I, I do think though that base, that base that wants a zero, they don't. They want the deficit to come down. They want to make sure that this tax bill. It doesn't affect the deficit, it doesn't increase the deficit. So part of that base is going to hold them accountable. And I heard in the Senate bill that taxes will go up if it's not funded, if it's not funded completely from the budget. So there is a part of the Republican base that will hold them accountable and say, hey, wait a second, you're spending, which is what got Bush in trouble at the end. The base was angry that the deficit continued and we kept, they kept spending and spending and spending. So I think there's a side that might actually say, hey, slow down, guys. I don't, I don't know about that because you know I, I was looking at there's an article in Fortune magazine that talks about the tax bill and the people who have the most to gain I suspect are the president's largest donors right. you know if you look at this in terms of corporate CEOs I just read corporate CEOs make 300 times more than their employees make if we look at the number you know and this and the bill is um, from what I understand is going to really help big corporations, corporations as opposed to small corporations that we know are overwhelmingly started by women right. um, particularly African-American women we've got um, uh, some stats that I saw in terms of Fortune 500 CEOs, only four of them are African American, only 32 are women. women yeah. Who stands to benefit the most? White right. men. Yeah. Spencer. Right. So th there's this theory that, hey, if we provide these corporate mm -hmm. tax breaks, and by the way, there's a double standard in the sense that the corporate tax breaks are permanent, right? Yes. And the tax breaks for average folks are not permanent. Not permanent. Yes. Right. right. You know? Uh, but the theory is that companies will spend this money to employ people and hire people, et cetera, and that just isn't, you know, laid out in terms of the facts. That's did, not did, established. Did you see? In terms did you the see? Um, the president's economic advisor mm -hmm. yeah. uh, was uh, was giving a talk, and they and somebody aired the, aired some of the clips, and he talked about how this corporate tax cut was going to incentivize CEOs to put the money back into their corporations, right. and he asked for a show of hands, mm -hmm. and I don't recall yeah, like seeing. Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and he was looking <laughs> around like shocked, like why isn't anybody else right. raising their hands? Right. No, you know? but, but it's a lie. Right. It's a lie. Gary Cohn got that lie. Yeah. Mick Mulvaney is a ideologue. He's saying run up the deficits. They've already bought off Susan Collins. Trump lied to her yesterday and said, oh, I'll subsidize these ACA. Uh, so, uh, that's a lie. It's a bold-faced lie. Bob Corker, who's a right wing, he said, well, I've seen enough to be satisfied. Him, him and Johnson voted out of committee yesterday. They, no, 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 no. There's no reason to believe they're not going to run the place. So, so let me take it back to Amy. What advice and what, what would you say to women, um, to African Americans, to African American women, uh, and to underrepresented um, minorities about what they should be looking at, mm -hmm. what they really have to lose? Like the like, top three headlines, what, it, what do you have to lose if you mm -hmm. don't speak mm -hmm. your voice? So you're going to lose health insurance coverage, and that's a huge issue for women and families because when a family lacks health insurance, the whole economic security of the entire family is just is put at risk. They're going to lose tax breaks that they count on every day, which are middle class tax breaks. When people go to work, the tax code helps offset and subsidize and recognize what people pay to actually just go out the door and go to work. And the pieces of the bill that are supposed to help them, like the increase in the child tax credit or reducing the st or increasing the standard deduction, both are going to expire while the corporate tax cuts are permanent and they're not going to do what they're advertised to do. And then down the line we're going to see the impact as the social programs get cut. So I think, you know, women are the ones who do taxes, they balance the checkbook, they know what the family has to spend and they are going to see that amount of money go down. And are responsible for your family's health care. Exactly. You know this is really horrible. My, my big headline would be uh, your congressperson is lying to you. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us this <laughs> morning. Days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out.
because you got a fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.